Of today's media briefing is to once again speak to the COVID-19 regulations that are in place. I am joined by Assistant Police Commissioner Martin Weeks, who will provide some information on the enforcement efforts that the police are doing to ensure that residents and businesses are complying with the COVID-19 regulations in place. You will have seen the Ministry of Health COVID-19 most recent update, a, an additional seven positive cases. This represents a slight uptick in our numbers. This should be concerning to the community. Also concerning are the recent activities that have taken place that are in direct violation of the regulations. I'm referring to the hosting of parties and gatherings that exceed the approved group gathering guidelines and the fact that the individuals at these events violated the health and safety protocols by not wearing a mask or practicing physical distancing. To be clear, I understand the community's outrage at these events that these events are taking place, particularly when the majority of our community are rightly adhering to the guidelines. And I also appreciate the community's frustration at the perception that the good are being punished because of the bad. And that not enough is being done to hold the, those accountable who blatantly break the law. I can assure you that the Ministry of National Security, the Bermuda Police Service, and the Department of Public Prosecutions are diligently taking steps to exact penalties against those who violate the Public Health Act. I'm now going to set out a few timely reminders for the public as we continue to navigate the pandemic. First and foremost, we remain under curfew, 12 midnight to 5 a.m. A curfew for recreational boating remains in effect. All recreational boating must end at 8 p.m. Large group gatherings are still limited to 25 persons. For indoor services or ceremonies in a church or other religious establishments, the number of persons who can gather is limited to 25% of the indoor area's full capacity. For the number of persons at outdoor services or ceremonies, including weddings and funerals, the number cannot exceed 50 persons. Closure powers. The BPS can close a licensed premise for a period not exceeding 24 hours. If a contravention of the public health COVID-19 emergency powers regulations has occurred on the premises, the Minister of Health can close any business or facility not in compliance. Enforcement powers. Under the regulations, an enforcement officer may stop and question an in individual or individuals to ensure that the persons or person is compliant with the regulations. If a person is not exempt in accordance with the guidelines or does not satisfy the enforcement officer's request, the officer may at any time take actions to enforce these regulations, including the dispersal of any group of more than 25 persons. An enforcement officer may use reasonable force, if necessary, in the exercise of a power under these regulations. No person shall resist, obstruct, or assault an enforcement officer who is acting in the execution of their duty under these regulations. Offenses. A person who fails to comply with these regulations commits an offense and is liable for the following. A fine of $6,000 in respect of the first offense. A second or subsequent offense, offense a fine of $10,000 or imprisonment for a term not exceeding three months or both. In the case of continuing offense, a fine of $1,000 in respect of each day during which the offense is continued. Lastly, it is an offense to not wear a mask in accordance to the guidelines. A person who fails to wear a mask 
when one is required, commits an offense and is liable on summary conviction of a fine of $500 for the first offense, a fine of $1,000 for a second or subsequent offense. Turning to the issue of individuals who have been detained, cited, or summonsed for violating the regulations. I will allow the Assistant Police Commissioner to provide some commentary on that, but here are a few statistics in response to a number of frequently asked questions. With respect to how many files the DPP have received from the police regarding private individuals who violate curfew under the public health enforcements, there have been 16 files received. With respect to how many private individuals have received fines or convictions for violating curfew under the Public Health Emergency Act, there have yet to be any convictions under the Public Health Emergency Act for violating curfew. Therefore, there have been no fines. Regarding how many files the Department of Public Prosecutions has received from the police regarding private individuals who violate COVID regulations on gatherings under the Public Health Emergency Act, I can advise that six files were received. Five persons were prosecuted, two received convictions, and three are pending trial. We've also received repeated queries about the fixed penalty legislation proposed and about the penalties for these individuals who were at the recent parties and events. Regarding the fixed penalty legislation, I can advise that the Ministry of Health has prepared a proposal for legislation that would see fixed penalties apply for a finite set of material breaches of the COVID-19 regulations. This legislation continues to be worked on and is advancing. It is unlikely that it will be retroactive once it comes into effect. However, under the current regulations, people linked to recent parties could be subject to a fine or conviction. This will depend on the investigation by the Bermuda Police Service and the prosecutorial procedure by the DPP's office. Finally, as I repeatedly say, now is not the time to become complacent. As a country, we have demonstrated resilience and discipline in navigating this pandemic, and we must remain vigilant. I'm urging residents to exercise a degree of personal responsibility by making smart and sensible decisions to protect you, your family, your friends, and your loved ones. As a reminder, we all must continue to do what we can to mitigate and limit the spread of the virus by complying with the policies in place. Please continue to follow the health guidelines. This includes wearing a mask, hand sanitizing, and maintaining the appropriate physical distancing. And finally, if you are in attendance at any establishment or location around the island and see any breaches of the COVID-19 regulations by persons or businesses, please do not hesitate to call 211 to report the violations. I will now turn it over to Assistant Police Commissioner Weeks, who will highlight some of the steps that the Bermuda Police Service have taken and continue to take to enforce the COVID-19 regulations. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Good afternoon, everybody. First of all, I'd like to reiterate the comments of the Minister. Um, this is serious. You know, these regulations are in place to keep us safe, to keep your family safe, to keep our senior citizens particularly safe during this global pandemic, which has not gone away. It is still here. There's a reason why these regulations are in place, and we encourage everybody to do their part to not only keep them themselves, but to keep their family members and their friends. We all know who these people are. There are not a lot of people coming in and out of the island. These are our cousins, our friends, our sons and daughters who are holding these parties and are ignoring the rules. So let's do our bit and be our own capable guardians. The Bermuda Police Service is, of course, out there dealing with these things as well as you know regular crime and antisocial behavior but we have specific teams targeting the curfew 
as well as making regular visits to licensed premises and working on trying to find out where these parties are happening. We have put people before the court, as the minister has said, but you know, I've heard a lot of people saying, well, why aren't we seeing this in the newspaper every day? And what I can say to that is those of us who've ever received a traffic ticket know that the time between receiving that traffic ticket and going to court, even pre-COVID, before all of the delays that COVID have caused, can sometimes be up to six months. So these things will come to court as and when they get to the top of the list. There is a long backlog in the courts, in the DPP's office, as well as everywhere else. So these cases will come up. I understand that we have 175 files that are currently going to the DPP's office. Um, there was a change in the prosecutor that was assigned to it, and he's asked for some different um, com parts to go into the files, and so we've had to take a lot of files back and redo them for the, you know, administrative reasons. But the files are, are going back in, and these will all probably end up in court. Again, charging decisions are not the remit of the Bermuda Police Service, but we will put files to the DPPs uh, recommending court appearances for all of these people. So to sum up, we're still out there. We are still enforcing these regulations. We call upon everybody to, you know, to follow them, to think before you have a party where you know, you're inviting a lot of people because people will show up. People are out there looking to have some fun. We've all been locked in for a long time and we all understand that people want to have fun. But to go to a party where you find that there's 100 people there and you're not wearing a mask and nobody's socially distancing and you're going in still and people are wearing quarantine bracelets at parties and you're not questioning you know, whether or not you should be there, use some common sense, use some personal responsibility, don't go, tell us about it, we will deal with it. Thank you. Thank you, Assistant Police Commissioner. Thank you, Minister. We'll now open it up to questions. I will uh, turn it over to Gary from Bermuda Broadcasting and then Jonathan from the Royal Gazette. Yes? Very good. Gary? Thank you very much, Minister and Assistant Commissioner. Um, this press conference, we've had a reiteration, essentially, of the laws and legislation that we already know are in place and everyone knows is in place. But we've continued to have COVID violations despite government's warnings. It appears that the non-compliant will remain non-compliant regardless of what you say behind that table. Is there, a, is there a better way to swiftly and specifically target the actual violators rather than blanket restrictions that impact everybody? Thank you for that question, um, Gary. It is a unique situation because you are correct. There are persons who will continue to violate. Um, the laws that have been put in place and the COVID guidelines are for everyone. Mm -hmm. And so they're not specific to any um, individual or any entity. So we're all governed by these laws. And so the enforcement that is now happening, what you're hearing is a reiteration of it, is because I think that the public needs to be reminded often what those guidelines are. Our role is to constantly, I mean, if it means we have to stand here week in and week out, we will do that because if it saves lives, it creates awareness, that's what we're committed to do. What we're asking the public to do now is to take some personal responsibility. I cannot be everywhere, the BPS cannot be everywhere. But what we're asking you to do is, if you're not thinking about yourself, think about your family, think about your loved ones, think about those persons you work with. And so what we're doing and we're appealing is we are asking you to take some personal responsibility and exercise some common sense. Um, just to add to the minister's comments, I mean, laws are in place to stop certain behaviours in all areas of our society. You know, we've got 60,000 people in Bermuda. You know, not all of them are murdering people, but we still need those rules in place to stop people from murdering people. And the same comes down to breaking COVID regulations. The, the laws are in place to regulate the behavior. And yes, there is only a small percentage of our population, that would be fair to say, that are breaking those rules and many others. And often the people who we find breaking curfew, often or not, we find that they're also committing other offenses whilst the curfew is going on. So 
you know, you're always going to get those people that will break the rules and we will target them where we can find them. Uh, you spoke to the files that the police have sent to the DPP for personal, uh, for private individuals. Mm -hmm. um, I understand you said that six files on private individuals who, uh, who, broke, uh, who broke gathering regulations were sent. Five will prosecute. I actually understand from the DPP that uh, w the two convictions are actually both one person. Yes. And they have received a fine of a first fine of $1,000 and a second fine of $1,500, 16 files on curfew violations, no prosecutions yet. It's all, it's all moving quite slowly, as you say, uh, uh, Assistant Commissioner. And I go back to my first question, is there a better way to stop it affecting everybody and target only the violators? Um, I think that the Minister covered that to a certain extent when she spoke about the plans for legislation for fixed penalties so that we mm. can issue them immediate fines. Um, this has been tried out in other overseas territories. Mm. Cayman has been using it for a while now, so we're looking very carefully at what they're doing. We're also looking very carefully at other jurisdictions, and the UK in particular, and how they are trying to tackle this and modelling our our um, enforcement on best practice elsewhere. So, you know, we're always looking to see if there's a better way and see if another jurisdiction mm. is doing it a better way, and we can then look to model our legislation on that to make things work better. Yes, mm. so I agree. There's, we're always looking for that better way. If I may ask, regarding that legislation, uh, we've, the Premier first indicated that legislation change from it being a uh, potential conviction or criminal conviction to a fixed penalty fine on February 16th. Where are we in that? How long is it going to be before that change happens? Um, unable to give you a timeline on that, Gary. It's legislation that's being prepared by the Ministry of Health, mm -hmm. and they're probably best um, suited to answer that question. Okay, thank you. And uh, one issue with that, with it changing to fixed penalties, doesn't that change mean that the legislation is now tar would be targeted to low-income violators rather than wealthy violators who may simply shrug off a fine? I really, I mean, I can answer that. I don't Please, think that that's that. necessarily the case. The fines are the fines. And across the board, you know, the people that we catch are from all income um, brackets. And the fines for the fixed penalties are not going to be a, a lot different. And those ones that we deem serious enough, so say we, we attend a party and there's some people there and we get all the names and we're able to deal with every person, we'll be giving fixed penalty tickets to the lower level offences. The person who's organised it and is really responsible for it, they're still going to court. Hmm. So, you know, we're going to, to look at it that way, that there'll likely be a bigger fine for that person who's got the organizing capacity, if you like. Do you think until people start seeing, the people who are violating now and have been so far, do you think until they start seeing that kind of conviction, that kind of prosecution, people getting those fines more regularly, will we actually see this reduction, this compliance on more across the board? Well, we always hope that word gets around. You know, word gets around when we, we're doing traffic um, enforcement, word gets around when we are out doing um, COVID enforcement and when people start getting hit in their pocket that's when that that starts going around too and you hear people talking about it so we found it with roadside sobriety testing you know when it first started we had a few people getting caught in it very soon we heard that people were cancelling house parties when they knew that roadside sobriety testing was going to take place and people were starting to change their behavior, which for the roadside sobriety testing, that was what it was about. It was never about catching people and putting them in, in jail. It's mm. about changing behavior and modeling behavior. So that was a, a successful result. And you know, we'll be getting back into that roadside sobriety testing when we're not doing the curfew. Okay. Can I just add to Absolutely, that as well? Please. I think that what the um, 
Assistant Commissioner is, is hitting is that the legislation is in place to protect everyone. It's not looking at your medium, how much money you make, how much income. It's there to actually keep you alive. And so what we're appealing again is in terms of your personal responsibility and may, making common sense decisions. We um, don't like to have to be um, quite heavy handed and enforce things, but this is the times that we live in. And at times it's, we, may, we may even be unpopular for the things that we need to do. But your health is important to us, and we hope that your health is important to you. So we don't see it as something that's attached to anyone's level of income. If we're following the rules, if we're doing um, the following what the guidelines lay out, then you should be fine. Okay. Uh, thank you for your indulgence. I do have one more question. You, we've spoken specifically, Assistant Commissioner, about the private individuals. Are you able to tell us how many files concerning businesses violating COVID regulations on gatherings have the police forwarded to the DPP? The same question for COVID breaches. No, I'm afraid I don't have those figures on hand. I did find out that you had that question just before I got here. <laughs> um, I will do my best to get that through to you from Gary Moreno. I very appreciate that. Thank you. And the final question, uh, the legislation does, I understand, give the police the, the power to arrest in, uh, under the public health emergency legislation. How many times have the police actually used that power for COVID uh, breaches such as regulations are careful? Well, I don't have the exact figures on hand because again, that, that mm. question came in just before we got here, but I can tell you that we have arrested someone this week mm. for the, um, the big event at right. the Botanical Gardens. So oh. we've got, they were in the custody in our cells yesterday for that. Um, we do arrest where we have to, we prefer not to arrest because, you know, especially when we're dealing with anything COVID related, bringing someone into our custody suite and all of the things that have to happen when you get into that close, we don't want to do that with someone who we are worried that they may um, be infected. So arrest really when it comes to COVID offenses is the last resort. However, don't get me wrong, our cells have been quite full lately, but those are people that we needed to arrest. The fact that we have the power there is very useful and when we need it, we use it, but we will try to steer clear of arresting people for COVID related offences simply because we do not want to put our officers at risk. I have a duty of care to my officers, to the custody officers, not to keep bringing people in just because we can arrest. So we'll bring people in to our cell area, to our, our custody suite where we have to. And so more people are being arrested for the more serious offences and not so much for the, cost, for the uh, COVID-related offences. Okay. 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 Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Assistant Commissioner. Thank you, Gary, for your questions. Uh, Jonathan from the Royal Gazette, do you have a few questions for the Minister and the Assistant Police Commissioner? Thank you all, and uh, thanks for having us. I'll, I'll, I'll try and keep it quick. Um, Assistant Commissioner, there was a mention of, um, I, I believe it was 175 files that were headed to the, is, is that all various COVID related? Yes, very, okay. you know, it's a whole, across that. the whole COVID regulations. Got you. Um, so, and you, you touched on the Botanical Gardens event. You, a lot of people were talking in the community about that. There was a perception. Well, I'll, I'll ask first of all, I mean, can you reveal, is it possible to reveal who that, that group of people was? No, that wouldn't be fair to do so. Okay. Um, there was a perception that, uh, you know, people were asking why no one's detained. There's pretty much only one way out of the botanical gardens. I guess there was at first only one car and then some, well, some they, other units exactly. arrived. Exactly, Jonathan. You had one car with a couple of officers in and people were fleeing in all directions people. as soon as we arrived. And one of the, the main powers that we have for these things is dispersal. So that's what we want. We want to get people apart. You know, we want to target the people who organized it. We want to target the worst offenders. So. You know, we, we go in, we're wearing body cams, we'll get people's faces, we'll identify people, and people will go to court. Got you. And I, I have it right that you were saying the organizer of that event was in, had, been, had actually yes, been arrested? Yes, he was actually the organizer. Is that expected to head to court then? Oh, absolutely. Okay, then. Are there likely to be other um, yes. people, folks, headed yes. to court from that? Okay, thanks for that. You mentioned duty of care to your officers. I guess, you know, you attend a big house party, seems to be the big offenders. A lot of alcohol have been consumed. You don't want to put your officers at risk. Can you give us a, just an idea of what the playbook is in a situation like that when you encounter something? Is it just about getting people to 
go or yes, do you the, try uh, and find as him? the minister mentioned when she was reading through the uh, regulations dispersal is our main tool here it's get people apart get people back to where they're they're um, actually six feet apart wearing their masks tell them get their masks on get apart get away from here leave if there's more than 25 people that's our initial approach and that's the most important thing stop what is happening from happening then we can look at you know penalizing people for those behaviors but the first thing is stop the behaviors if it means getting rid of all the people then that's the best result for health reasons because remember all of these things it's about the health it's not about police ability to arrest people and put people in court gotcha and just the last one i wasn't there but i'm told a lot of people saw it must have been emotional minister de silva uh, mr de silva was embracing friends outside magistrates court yesterday We've all had our lapses at moments, I guess. Minister, is that something that's on your radar? Has, has it been brought up or is it just, I don't know, one of those chance events where you have a word with someone when you can? Um, I can imagine it would be an emotional situation yeah. and it is an investigation by the BPS at this time. That's all that I'll have to say on that. Righto, thank you. Thanks. Right. Thank you very much, uh, members of the media, for your uh, thorough questions today. Uh, thank you very much, Minister. Thank you very much, Assistant Police Commissioner. That concludes today's press briefing. We thank you for your attention.